Hello, everybody. I'm Toby Gennaro, and uh, we've got a decent-sized crowd on today, so everything's looking good there. Let's uh, do the sound check real quick, as we normally do, make sure the technology's uh, coming across loud and clear. My voice, along with the, um, the splash screen here at Live Technical Analysis uh, for November 6, 2018. If you guys are hearing all that, it's coming across loud and clear. Just give me a, an electronic high-five via the question box on your screen. And uh, that'll let me know that um, you guys are on board and uh, we're ready to jump in and crank things up. So uh, shoot over a couple of messages for me. Great, guys. Thanks for doing that. Looks like we're all good. Uh, we'll get the recording started and I'll do a formal introduction of recording purposes and then we'll jump into the content. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Toby Gennaro, and I'll be your presenter for today. The topic for today is live technical analysis. So as normal on Tuesdays, I'm going to be talking through a series of specific trade setups that are happening in real time that I'm seeing in the markets, and we'll kind of walk through those and show you how they work. Uh, for those of you that are on the live webinar this morning, if you have questions during the session, uh, please type those into the question box on your screen. Uh, I may be asking you some questions questions as well. So we'll try to keep this interactive, which always makes things um, you know, a bit more entertaining, a little bit more interesting. Uh, Got to do this as part of the business. Uh, I need to put up this risk warning and disclaimer. So I'll leave this up for about 30 seconds or so. Just have a quick read through if you can. Uh, what this is saying in brief is that we provide education only, which means we do not give any financial advice. And as most of you know, trading the markets can be risky. It's not suitable for everyone and you should seek independent professional advice. All right, everybody uh, good with that? <clears throat> and moving right along here, just one more disclaimer from uh, Nadex, it's a short one. Just have a quick read through this one and that'll wrap up the disclaimers for today. And we'll be able to get to the content here shortly. All right, everybody good? Let's, uh, let's get started then. So you can kickstart your trading uh, each and every Tuesday with this regular feature from the trading team at Trade with Precision. And, uh, you know, with so much going on in the markets uh, each week, you know, the big question is how can we spot opportunities across multiple markets and multiple time frames to get trade setups for ourselves? So you can join us weekly for this uh, insightful live webinar where we will focus on technical and trend analysis across major markets to help uh, find an answer to that question. So let's go ahead and, um, I jump into some of the live charts and see what kind of uh, trading opportunities um, we can find. Uh, I did take a look uh, before we got on the session this morning. I took a look at a couple of charts and kind of went through my normal routine and um, found some that I thought would be good to consider for potential trading opportunities. Uh, today, they're a little longer term setups, but that's some things to, uh, to look out for. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, we'll be looking at two different charts, one on the dollar CAD and then the other on the dollar yen. So it looks, looks like uh, folks are uh, buying up uh, uh, the greenbacks and uh, selling off uh, everything else. And so we'll take a look and see what the, uh, you know, what the trends look like and, um, and what potential setups uh, might be happening here in the coming week. So give me a minute here to set up my charts get everything aligned here. I think you guys can see, uh, let's see, we've got the Nadex screens and then we've got the actual charts and you guys should be able to see all that by now. Great. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, the dollar CAD uh, first and and, uh, and see what's going on here. I mean, obviously we've been, I'm looking at the higher time frames and the reason I do this is when we look at time frames that are a little too short, it uh, doesn't really give anybody uh, time to uh, react or to follow, you know, some of the technicals that um, that we're pointing out. So I like, look, like to look at things a little bit longer term, kind of give you guys maybe a heads up as to some things um, that you may want to have on your list to look for setups going forward. And so if I find something on the higher time frames like the monthly, weekly, daily, then that usually gives everybody uh, either on the webinar or you know, folks looking at this, um, a replay of this on YouTube can have a chance to uh, to engage as well. And it gives these, you know, these recordings a little bit longer lifespan. So in looking at this, we've had, um, you know, a lower high, a lower low, and then we're back up around here, a bounce off of this uh, level. And then we're back up here. We have all the moving averages in alignment. We just got a nice bullish candle, actually the first one 
nice bullish candle and it looks like we're ready to break out um, above the, the top of that candle, which is a signal for uh, a continuing trend um, uh, in, the, in the upward direction. So that's on the monthly chart. That signals uh, maybe a longer term uh, run for us, which, uh, which would be good. That could present a lot of um, uh, long trading opportunities going forward if we can find the right setups for that. Um, here on the weekly chart, same thing, except we have um, some higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low. We have a nice trend uh, setup going forward really nice. All the moving averages, the 200, the 50, the 20, and the 10, all in alignment. Uh, just had this pullback back in with a nice bullish candle, a break above the high, and several other bullish candles. A little bit of a consolidation right here. Uh, the moving averages catching up to the price. And we've got some, uh, a nice little bullish candle forming there again on the weekly. So we have a lot of good uh, bullish signals here, both on the monthly as well as the weekly. Everything fanning, uh, everything trending up very nicely. Uh, on the indicators here, uh, things are moving pretty well. Uh, all of the highs, we're seeing higher highs on the indicators, which is good as well. Uh, that signals that there's a lot of trend strength. Um, that's involved in this trend, which is uh, which is what we want. And then looking here at the daily chart, so I've got a couple of uh, higher highs, a couple of higher lows in here, another higher high, and then all the moving averages, 250 to 20 to 10, all in alignment, fanning out once again. Really nice um, rejection candle, bullish candle right there in the zone between that 10, 20 period moving average. Got a break of the high, and it looks like we're going to be moving back up to potentially put in another high beyond this 131.7 level, I'd probably say back up to at least that high right there, right around um, you know 132, potentially up around uh, that 132.3 level, and then potentially higher uh, onwards up to 133. So um, it looks like the market wants to rally here uh, a bit. As we go down to the eight hour, uh, another good looking chart as well. Uh, all the moving averages fanning out, higher highs, higher lows, uh, good looking candle sizes throughout this trend, nice rejection candle right there, consolidated for a bit, uh, created almost a little flat level there and then broke up through that, which is where we're at right now. So we're a little late at that point um, on the breakout of the trade, but being that we have uh, so many other higher time frames, the monthly, the weekly, and the daily, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to be, um, to be late on on this particular trade since we have so many so many charts going in the right direction which is uh, which is positive so it doesn't mean that there can't be pullbacks on shorter time frames like you know one or two hours or three hours so you got to be careful in terms of um, you know getting your setups uh, right when you're looking at a binary or a spread type contract and so um, so what I'm looking for right here is really kind of a run back up to the high here at 131 seven in the near term. Now this took, uh, let's see, eight hours, one, two, three, four, five, five candles took 40 hours for this pullback to occur, you know, roughly almost two days. And so going back up, it's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, uh, you know, it's almost taking longer to go back up than it did to pull back. Uh, but usually once it catches fire, uh, it'll probably hit this level, uh, you know, fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, but being that these are eight hour candles, I'd still probably want to give myself maybe a minimum of probably 16 hours um, for anything that I'm looking for on this trade. Let's take a look at some other um, charts. Here we had a nice little uh, flat level break uh, right there, as you can see at that 131.17 level. And we just broke up above that, all the moving averages fanning out here, everything fanning here uh, as well. Uh, actually, a nice bullish candle in and around the buy zone right there. Um, so really just all of the charts across the board uh, really making nice alignment here uh, out of a consolidation uh, starting to fan out. Uh, this is a really nice looking move right here on the 60 minute chart. A larger bullish candle right here. We missed these uh, these candles right there and it consolidated for a while before we, before we got the bounce. Everything converging fairly well on both the indicators and then on the 30 minute chart, uh, things are a little bit more um, overextended than on the 60 minute. And then as you go down to some of the lower time frames, um, not, everything's good and everything's aligned, but not necessarily uh, 
as good as uh, some of the other time frames that we've been looking at. So that is, uh, let's take a look at, let's go back to the, uh, the daily and the, the eight hour chart because these are ones I, I pretty much like the most. I think the daily chart might be in for a multi-day run. Uh, just coming out of this nice little setup there and then a break above this level at 131.7, potentially 132. So let's go and look at some of the Nadex contracts for the dollar CAD and look to see, first of all, how much time we've got on some of these. 49 minutes, that's no good. Okay, 14 hours, that would be a good one at 3 a.m. And then 18 hours, that's a possibility. Uh, two hours, no good. And then six hours, uh, six hours might work for some of those since they're on a move. Um, I'd probably look at something that is uh, very close to um, that 131, you know, that 131 to 20 level. Uh, even 131.40 looks nice right around uh, for $40 gives you at least uh you know, a two to one uh, reward to risk, uh, which is good. And then you have another one here at 3160. Um, so you get almost almost about seven hours there, but that's only one candle on the 480 chart. I would much rather look at something that's like this, uh, probably the 3 a.m., which would be right around 15 hours. That would at least give us two candles. And if the market's gonna sprint, um, you know, we'll get two candles back up to that, you know, that 131 seven level. So here, 131.6, 131.8, and then we've got another here, 131.4. And so this one puts us right at a one-to-one -one reward to risk, buying these right around 50, looking to hold them till expiration um, if they're going to reach 100, and we can hit that level at 131.40. That's well below the um, a retest of that uh, of that next high. And then 3160 is still below that level. And then 3180 is just above and a breakup to a new high. So that one's probably got a little bit more risk on it, but there are a couple of good ones here at 34 and at 48 that uh, that looks certainly reasonable at 14 hours. And then if we go a little bit longer, we can go almost 19 hours and catch some of those same uh, price zones. You'll pay a little bit more for them, but not by much and you get a little extra time uh, as well. So 48, 33, and 22 would be a couple of contracts there as well. So you have a whole selection there of um, of different time frames and the amount of time left as well as strike prices, which, uh, which work out pretty good on that particular setup. So as you can see, we're right around that 131, uh, four level just below. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, this thing could close up around 131, uh, seven and uh, that you know 14 to 18 hours I think gives you gives you a decent amount of time for that question here uh, from Robert he's asking what charts are you using I'm actually using uh, trade station charts uh, reason I do that is um, because I can have a couple of charts up here at a time and I can cycle through the charts um, since this is only a 30 minute session and uh, get to the points that I need to make um, during the session otherwise um, I mean charts like this you have to pay for the data so it can get expensive. Uh, Nadex has done a great job uh, providing uh, free charting. Uh, it has all of the binary ladders uh, overlaid on the price action, which is great. And you get all of the data for free on all the markets that, um, that the binaries and the spreads cover. So it's a great way to go. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go and check out the, uh, the dollar yen. Take a look at a couple of dollar pairings here. And so... This one is um, a little bit similar, uh, uptrend, uh, had a little bit of a consolidation here, uh, pulled down and set up a, a higher low from the swing low down here. And then we have basically a nice flat level, as you can see, setting up right there. We've got a number of touches right along there. We've got all the moving averages getting into alignment. There's a pre-existing trend here that's been going on for quite some time on the monthly chart, very high time frame. So these can take a long time to develop, especially a flat level like that. If we get a consolidation of small candles right here, I mean, that could take three months to uh, to literally break out. But being that we're on the one, two, three, four, maybe three or fourth touch, 
Um, the breakout, you know, might be a little bit more eminent, but on a monthly chart, I mean, that still could take a couple of weeks. Here on the weekly time frame, we've got some nice uh, higher highs and higher lows, nice fanning of the moving averages once again, nice consistent higher highs here on both of the, uh, the MACD and the RSI. It tells us there's a lot of uh, strength left in this trend. Nice bullish candle sitting right there in the zone, just broke above that setup candle. Uh, right there are a grouping of setup candles. So that looks very positive for uh, for continued move higher. Um, and then we're looking at the daily and the 480 uh, once again. And so the daily has already kind of taken off, fairly large candle there in the zone, but all the moving averages aligned. Uh, everything's where we need it. Um, just the, the break of that high would have been right there. So we're still pretty close. So it hasn't been a runaway or anything like that. And then here on the, the 480, we've got a nice setup candle there and then a little consolidation. We've been above that uh, level right there for, uh, for at least almost a day, 24 hours, three candles. Moving averages catching up, got another bullish candle there. So um, things look like they're, uh, they're moving, have a little bit of resistance uh, right around that level right there at 113.4. Uh, but it looks um, looks like it might, looks like it might break that uh, fairly handily as we move down through the time frames. And here, the uh, the four hour and the two hour, same thing. All the moving averages in alignment. Uh, nice small bullish candle right there with a break. Uh, that's very good. Had a couple of them there. Um, so a little bit of a consolidation sideways. Here's a nice one. A couple of very small candles. Those are the nice candles that I like to see. Your risk is small. And um, when it gets a break, uh, usually you can see by large candles like that, uh, a lot of folks had some um, so some buy stops sitting in just above the high of those two candles. And when the price broke through there, they all ignited. And that's why you get those those moves up like that. So a little bit of resistance up around this level, around 113.4, which is where we're at. But it looks like uh, the markets want to continue to move. Uh, higher. Uh, we do have some divergence here on the four hour. Uh, that might be slowing things down a bit. Some slight divergence there on the MACD, simply meaning that price is putting in a higher high and the indicators have not put in a higher high. They've actually put in a lower high. So usually when you get, you know, one lower high and then another lower high, basically calling that two legs of lower highs, you start to get a downward trend on the indicators. And if you still have higher highs on the indicators, then that signifies bearish divergence. That means the trend is most likely weakening and it's due for, for a deeper pullback. So uh, we don't really have that much yet. We've got one, uh, one leg of divergence. That doesn't bother me too much since we have a lot of higher time frames that are, seem to be on board with this trend. And then the 60 minute uh, has already taken off from the setup, same with the 30 minute. So there's really nothing there. Um, the five minute already set up and that one's taking off. And as you can see with the higher highs are all uh, being reflected in the, uh, on the MACD and the RSI, which is good as well. So the ones I'm looking at more than likely are gonna be uh, probably the 480, <clears throat> let's see the 480. Yeah, probably the 480 in the weekly. So I'd probably want a little bit more time on some of these. I'd be even willing to look at some daily or uh, or weekly contracts. And more than likely, I'm gonna be looking up at this flat level right there, which is right around 114.4. I don't think I'd be looking for any contracts above the 114.4 level. But let's take a look here. Uh, we're gonna look for dailies and weeklies. So 14 hours. Probably want a little bit more than that if we can find it. We got 18 and then we've got two, seven, and 10. So the 18 hour is gonna be about as much as we're gonna get on, uh, on this one. Um, so I, if I'm gonna go with less time, then I wanna keep my strike price a lot closer to that 113.4 level which right about here is going for 50. Uh, so we still have that one-to-one -one reward to risk, which is our minimum, which is good. Uh, the 113.60, uh, 
uh, that could be reasonable. We'll get at least uh, what two candles, two and a half candles on uh, on the eight hour chart. So maybe the 113 um, 60 and the 113 40, somewhere between uh, 40 and 50 dollars, right there would be reasonable. And then also, I think there's an opportunity here probably on the weekly chart, which gives us three days. Um, and so you could probably play, um, you know, sometimes I'll play, you know, one contract on the weekly and then maybe do a couple of contracts on a daily. So you have a shorter term and a longer term. And sometimes if the market stalls and I might lose on the daily contracts, but then longer term by the end of the week, the market's made its move and I'll make up those losses on on the weekly contract. But right here, we got three days, which is decent for a weekly and a daily uh, type setup. And then looking at the, let's see, 131.25, 131.75, and then, so the 131.75 uh, would be decent, and then a 132, let's take a look at that chart again. Hang on a second. I'm still looking. What am I doing? I'm still looking at the, the cat. I thought I was on. Sorry about that. Uh, we're looking at the ones we just looked at were these uh, with, I think we had about 18 hours on them. Yeah, 18, 19 hours for 40 and 50. And then somehow I got messed up there. But the one I wanted to look at was this one, the weekly. And then uh, 113, we're right at 113.4. So this one's in the money. It's going to be, yeah, definitely more than $50. So we're not going to get a one-to-one -one there. So I don't like that as much. This one right here at 113.75 is good. It's got a lot of time on it. I can get this for less than $40. Gives me almost a two-to-one reward to risk. Uh, that's pretty decent. And then uh, this one at 114.2, 114.2 is going to be a little bit higher, I think, than I want to go. 114, 114.4 is right at that flat level. I would expect, uh, you know, a lot of resistance at that point. So 114.2, um, you know, could probably work, but more than likely, if it gets to that flat level right there, um, more than likely, I'd be looking to uh, to liquidate these contracts at right around 50 simply because um, if you don't, then uh, you're, you're risking a pullback off of that level. And then at that point you'd run out of time. But for right here, we can at least get, uh, you know, probably a, um, you know, at least a one-to-one, -one, maybe a one and a half to one on that one. And then you get a couple of choices there on the weekly as well. So, so a couple of uh, decent uh, opportunities there uh, to take a look at and consider when you're looking at the charts. And so really it's about, uh, you know, these Tuesdays are about going through, looking at the technicals, understanding how to look at the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and go all the way through all the time frames and understand what the trend looks like. And these are two good opportunities to see how, you know, five, six, seven time frames can all start trending in the right direction, which really gives you a nice signal to look for, um, you know, your trend setups basically on any two time frames. Here it could be a monthly and a weekly, it could be a weekly and a daily, a daily and an eight hour, four hour, two hour, two hour, one hour. And you're looking for, you know, all of these setups, these trend flow setups uh, and these pullbacks into the zone, uh, getting set up for another move higher. So those are uh, those are some of the some some decent charts to uh, to follow as you guys continue trading throughout the week. And um, any, uh, any questions as far as uh, anything I've presented so far and anything related to these charts that you guys have questions about that I can answer for you at this point? I just have uh, maybe one or two more slides to finish up, and then we'll close out here at the 30-minute uh, the mark. But we've got a little bit of time here to handle some questions if you guys have any. All right, no other, uh, no other questions. Let me just... Um, wrap up here with uh, one last slide and um, get that all set up. Just let me get my screen set up on my end, if you will. 
and I'll walk you through how you guys can get a little bit more out of uh, out of Nadex in your uh, in your relationship with them if you are a, a current member. So what Nadex is doing here is they're really just making an investment in your success as an investor, and that's why you know they're sponsoring events like this one today uh, and every Tuesday as we do these uh, throughout the month. A couple different ways that you guys can uh, get in touch with us: phone and email that's listed here. Uh, for any questions that you might have after the session, uh, or you can ask me your questions right now, uh, just as you've been doing. Demo counts are uh, also available just to provide you some familiarity with the contracts we've been talking about today. So that's always uh, a good way to go to help understand the pricing and how these move and ebb and flow. For uh, current members of Nadex, if you'd like to begin trading again, go ahead and log into nadex.com. Take advantage of the advanced education webinars. Um, we're, we're running those to help take uh, all of this technical analysis and frame it up into uh, what's called a, um, a basically a technical strategy. And so we'll teach you two technical strategies in those advanced webinars. If you're interested in those, just get in touch with uh, the 800 number, uh, customer service, and they'll help you out with that. It'll help take trading to the next level. If you're new to Nadex and you'd like to set up an account initially, just go again to nadex.com. Click on, I believe it's the orange box in the top right. It says sign up and just fill in your details there. Someone from Nadex will respond via email to get you set up. Uh, before you do sign off, there is a short survey upon your exit. Uh, please let us know your thoughts there. And uh, certainly I thank you all for joining us. Um, if there are any questions, I will stay on a little while longer here to uh, get a response to those. Let me just take a look here on my screen. Chuck's got a good question here. How would you manage a trade once it is in? That's a great question. Uh, we're going to teach a lot of that in the advanced education webinars about uh, not only the uh, the entry stop and the profit target, but then after the initial profit target is done, what other profit targets can you look at? And typically, Chuck, the way we'll do that is uh, once I'm set up, say I'm buying into um, say I'm buying into a binary on any one of these trades, say at the level of you know 30. Uh, let's 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 say yeah let's say a level of 30 then uh, I'm going to be looking to dump half my position as soon as that trade if it moves in my direction as soon as that contract gets to 60 and I've doubled my money I want to take half of my profit off the table so I want to dump half of my contracts that gets the trade to break even and then if there's going to be any more of a run then I can set up you know a few more exits at either a standard deviation of 30, so I can go 30, 60, 90, or I can go 30, 60, and then I might go some contracts at 70, some contracts at 80, dump the rest at 90, and maybe hold some final contracts till expiration, see if I can get 100. And that's kind of how I would do that, but managing to the break-even point, really critical with these kind of contracts because they're an all-or-nothing type of contract, okay? Uh, Michael's got a question here. Um, Surprise at the spreads. I assume the more time, the larger the spread. Uh, you, they're, they're, you're going to be some. Uh, the spreads are the spreads are fairly similar to um, you know to a futures contract. It really just depends on uh, on how much action uh, is in the market uh, at that point. Um, but uh, the spreads are fairly reasonable. Any other questions that you guys have? Uh, have for me before we wrap up. You're welcome, guys. Thanks for joining. Glad you enjoyed the uh, the session for this morning. Hope you learned something. Hope that helped. So join us again next week, uh, Tuesday. Uh, we kind of uh, sometimes we'll be doing the same uh, session. Sometimes we'll throw in um, some of the uh, the trade strategies, and we'll talk about those. So you guys can get a mix of some of the live chart trading and analysis, and then also some of the um, uh, some of the trade setup uh, type work on uh, on Tuesday morning. So make sure you join us every week, and uh, we'll help you with that.